All right, we're on the home stretch now. This video series is taking longer than I thought it would. The next few steps are that I want to put magnets on the inside of the frame and the door to help hold the door shut. And then I also want to drill a hole on the back of the frame to hang this cabinet from. And finally, to finish this, we're going to use boiled linseed oil and shellac. I have some small rare earth magnets that I want to add to the door and the frame. Using a piece of scrap wood, I've gone through my drill bits and found one that will tightly fit these magnets. I need to get myself one of those egg beater drills. That would be ideal. I used two pairs of these rare earth magnets and that proved to be too strong. My little cabinet actually wants to pull away from the wall as I open it. So I would recommend that you only use one pair or maybe even a single magnet and a screw. As we get close to our flag. All right. You'll notice I used a stack of magnets to help pull that back out since it is a friction to fit. And then we need to mark the location for those on the door. Now I've put a second magnet standing proud of my frame to help mark the location on the door. Now there's no reason to run out and buy some die cam or transfer paper or anything like that. You can use some lipstick that your wife has or that you have. Plus it's, you know, good for a night out on the town. Put a little dab on the magnet and then close the door and you'll have a mark right where it has to be. I recommend super glue for gluing these magnets in. So when working with magnets it's imperative of course to get your poles the right way. So before I glue these in, I've left them on here, and I will mark the inside. You think this is a simple enough thing, there's only two options, but I've screwed it up before on my lap desk by trying to just use my brain. no real room for error here. All right, I should be able to slide that off without disturbing the glue. Perfect. Add some glue to the bottom and edges of our hole. And place that inside in. Now obviously the glue is going to have to dry before we use the magnets, but it is okay to close the door once as long as we don't open it again. So I'm going to do just that. While those magnets dry, it should be fine to drill our holes for hanging. Now here's my first major uh, design flaw with this project. I've only put one hole in here for a nail. So when the door opens, the center of gravity of the cabinet changes and it wants to tilt. So for your own project, put two holes, you know, spaced about a third of the way in from either edge. That way it can't tilt. Or eschew this plywood panel in the back and use a piece of 1x3 for a French cleat system. Commercially available picture hangers would work as well. So before I do the glue up, I'm going to go ahead and finish the door as a separate piece. I think it'll just be easier for getting in the nooks and crannies. To finish this project, I'm going to put two or three coats of boiled linseed oil to help bring out the figure in the wood. And then once that is completely dry, I'm going to put 
uh, some shellac on top of that to give a protective finish. So one of the keys to using boiled linseed oil, in my opinion, is that your first coat you want to mix 50-50 with some mineral spirits. That will thin it down and help it penetrate into the wood. After about 10 minutes, wipe off all the excess boiled linseed oil, otherwise you'll end up with a sticky mess instead of a nice finish. When the first coat is completely dry, probably the next day, you can add a second coat. Again, we let the boiled linseed oil completely dry before we applying shellac. I believe I've mixed this in a one pound cut, and if you're curious, that color is called garnet. So I begin by applying the shellac with a dauber. However, for the crevices, I touch those up with a paintbrush as I don't want a bunch of shellac pooling in the groove that we cut. One of the nice things about shellac is that it dries quickly so we can apply a second and even third coat with like 10 minute intervals. All right, fast forward to after the third coat. If you do end up with just a little tiny nibs on here, just a little bit of texture. Trick I learned from somewhere on YouTube was a brown paper bag has just enough coarseness to it to take those off. I, you won't be able to see it on the camera, but you can definitely feel the results when you try it for yourself. I never would have thought that'd work. Even when I heard it, I thought it was nonsense, but turns out it is a great tip. Should be ready for final assembly. Now, first thing I want to do is put some paste wax on the pegs of my hinge mechanism here. I'll keep it from squeaking. And also keep any glue out of there should there be an accident. Now well, that's done, we're going to need a couple clamps some glue, and our full vocabulary of curse words. Right? Oh, no? And now we wait. Dust this off. Get our first coat of BOL on there. Once I've got three coats on here, we'll come back and do our shellac. And here is our completed key cabinet holder build. I hope you've learned something from watching this, and don't forget to check down below for a link to the plans. Thanks for watching.